Can I do it so I can Hey, talk? world. Can What's I talk going on? Hi. Get out of here. That's where she poops. <laughs> Are you ready for the most exciting video of the year? We're talking 2021 product fails. Before we get into the fails, if you're sitting there thinking, hmm, did I miss her 2021 makeup favorites? No, I just haven't filmed it yet. Honestly, I find fails videos so much more helpful, so much more fun to watch, and so much more fun to film. I don't learn anything from watching people's annual makeup favorites. If you watch their videos, you know their favorites. But I know a lot of you really love watching those videos, so I will certainly film that next. I just really wanted to get my fails video out because I think it's so much more fun. Quick disclaimer, just because this didn't work for me doesn't mean it's a bad product, doesn't mean it's a bad brand. One man's trash is another man's treasure. First up, we have this new Cali Ray gloss. This is in Rainbow Blow. I'm wearing it on my lips right now, and right before this, I just filmed a Cali Ray brand review, so check that out if you haven't. But for me, I wanted this to be a thicker, more nourishing, balmy product. I have so many lip products. The formula isn't a 10 out of 10 hit for me. I'm just not ever gonna reach for it, so I'm probably gonna pass this to a friend. I also felt like the shade was just a little bit too bright pink for me. I thought it was gonna be this like, fun, vibrant, sexy, reddish, pinky coral, but it's really just like a, a bright, warm pink. So if you like the Tower 28 glosses that are like very bright, but sheer and lightweight, high shine, then you'll honestly probably love these. Not a bad product by any means. It just was not my personal favorite. Next up is a new product I haven't reviewed yet. It is the Beauty Pie Super Dose Vitamin C Moisturizing Shea Butter Hand Cream with brightening tranexamic acid and bio vitamin C 2%. Sorry, Beauty Pie, this is a phenomenal formula. I love how lightweight it is and it sinks into the hands and I can immediately touch my keyboard and my phone and it's not greasy, doesn't leave a residue, doesn't feel like anything. I love that it has ingredients that brighten the hand, but my God, even without opening the product, I can smell it from here. And I'm already getting a headache with the closed product this close to my face. It smells, I mean, I can smell it from here. Yeah, it smells like incredibly strong, clean soap. And I, I have to put it, put it aside. I can't have it near my face. Next is a product I don't have in front of me, but I will put an image right here over my toilet. It was the Fit Glow eyeliners that they launched this year. And I loved their lip liners. The lip liners are so, so, so good. But I found that the eyeliners, when I started playing with them a little bit more, you know, at first I was really excited. They were so sheer. I was like, oh, this is great. I can just kind of swipe it on. And if I make mistakes, it's barely there. So it's really easy for beginners. But then I kind of realized that that wasn't helpful because as I was starting to practice eyeliner more and more, I started building it up and building it up and it really wouldn't build very well. And then by the time I got to that point, my eyes were like raw. It just is not a great, eyeliner. I think that I would prefer a formula for a pencil that is creamy and slidey right out of the gate. Um, it just was not pigmented enough and so it didn't last and I know a lot of people felt that way so I used them in one video and then as I started like playing with them a little bit more I never used them again. The next product is this Sunny's Face uh, eye crayon stick, eye crayon color stick. This is the shade Pretzel. Beautiful shade creamy, perfect stunning formula. I was looking for a dupe for Nude Sticks Terra because the Nude Sticks ones, first of all, I don't support Nude Sticks anymore. Um, I don't like where the brand is going and some of their behavior, but also the Nude Sticks eye pencils feel so heavy and like sticky on my lids. This is beautiful to start. I mean, it's this stunning orangey terracotta and you can just kind of blend it on your eyes and it just blends out into this gorgeous looking shadow, so easy to work with, and then it's gone in an hour, less than an hour. I mean, if this is on my eyes, my eyes will suddenly start being really oily and it will fade and crease, and I do not have oily lids, I have dry lids, and so this is like the first product that ever made me feel like I had oily lids, and it looks incredible at first, and it's so easy to blend, and the colors are perfect. The colors are so me, um, but sadly this just did not last and it faded super fast. Next up is a controversial one. This is the Victoria Beckham Lid Luster in Chiffon. I don't think I've seen anyone ever say bad things about Victoria Beckham's products. 
Um, everyone seems to be really in love with everything. For me, it's a shade issue. I just have not found a shade of the Lid Luster formula that worked for my preferences. Everything is either too light and too bright or far too dark or too cool toned. They're none of my like warm bronzy shades, warm mid-tone shades. Um, this one online, I just felt very much deceived by the images. This is chiffon and it is such a bright champagne. And what I thought it was online, it looked a little bit more, uh, maybe a shade and a half darker. Something kind of like L'Oreal Amber Rush, but in a more um, sophisticated formula and more sophisticated packaging. So I'm gonna show you beautiful formula, so creamy, a glitter topper, but a lot of base pigment. But you know, it's pretty much the color of my skin. Like you can barely see it. When it's on my eyes, it's like I could just put a face highlighter on my eyes. So very disappointing, not the shade I wanted, and I will be passing this to a friend. One that I totally forgot about is the ColourPop Cheek Dew Blush. That shit was trash. You know, a lot of these products I say, all of this is subjective, you know, everyone has different preferences, but I think that's a trash product. Like objectively, I think it's a bad product. It was just gel, wet gel dew. You would blend it out and it would look pretty at first. And then as you would tap it out, the pigment would completely disappear and you'd be left with just like patches of pigment and then just like, wet shine. It was not what we're looking for. Another product that's extremely similar is the M Cosmetics Serum Blush. They sent me their holiday set back in October and it had the one in rose milk. It was not nearly as hard to work with as the ColourPop by any means, but the color was so light. I think they sent me rose milk. It like barely showed up on my skin. And so when I tried to build it up, it was just so sheer that it disappeared. It wasn't patchy like the color pop, but it's still just for my skin was like a little too wet looking. I don't like the look of a wet cheek. I don't like the look of wet skin. It reminds me of like every boy I went to high school with. If you like the look of wet skin, you do you, but it's not for me. And so that blush is a pass. I much prefer a powder blush, a cream blush that sets down or some type of cream powder hybrid. In my recent video, the part-time YouTuber tag, I talked about sponsored posts and my approach so that I can be more transparent and sort of give you a behind the scenes look at why I choose certain partnerships and why I don't choose certain partnerships. So the next product is one that started out as a sponsored partnership, but because I didn't like the product, I declined the opportunity. It's the Juno Cleansing Balm. I don't remember what else it's called, but it's their cleansing balm and they were super nice. They reached out, they said, hey, we'd love to pay you to participate in this campaign. Like, can you post this on your Instagram page? And I said, sure, would love to do that. I love testing new cleansing bombs. However, I will never agree to sponsored content before trying the product first to make sure that I fall in love with it wholeheartedly and that I am sharing authentic feedback with my audience. That is my no shit, like must have rule for any type of ad or sponsored post. They were super nice, totally understanding. They sent me the product and unfortunately it just didn't work for me. So I had to decline the campaign. The cleansing balm kind of has that like pharmacy sorbet cleansing texture, but it separates. So it's like some parts are the sorbet texture, other parts are just straight oil. So that was kind of weird. It just made me feel like it separated and wasn't completely stable. It also had a pretty strong citrus scent. The product ended up burning my eyes and it left a film on my face that was difficult to wash off. So definitely not my favorite. Speaking of cleansing balms, another one I didn't like was the new Pharmacy Clearly Clean Cleansing Balm. It's the fragrance free version of their uh, green clean. And I love that they launched a fragrance free version for people who can't use the sort of natural scents in their uh, regular cleansing balm. But they also changed the formula and they made it a lot creamier. What ended up happening for me is I felt like it just was not effective. It was kind of leaving a film on my eyes and it left a film on my face when I washed it off. So that one was also a skip. Love my pharmacy green clean though. I don't ever have issues with sensitivity or it stinging my eyes. It's so effective at removing makeup and sunscreen and it washes right off. So I love that one. I just don't love the new Clearly Clean. And while we're on the topic of pharmacy, God, their new 10% niacinamide mask ruined 
my skin for four days. If you watched my recent five minute Zoom makeup, my skin in the beginning of that video when I talk about a product that ruined my skin and made me break out in rashes, it was the Pharmacy 10% Niacinamide Mask. Now there are aspects of it that I love. First of all, my skin loves niacinamide in small quantities. I cannot do any of the Paula's Choice Niacinamide serums. They make me break out in rashes. It's so intense. Some people can tolerate high amounts of niacinamide well, others can't. I cannot, surprise, surprise. With niacinamide, I never have a heads up from my skin. It feels so calm, calming and soothing when it goes on my face. In the morning, I wake up covered in rashes. And it's such a shame because the niacinamide mask from pharmacy had the most beautiful texture. It was like a thick gel cream that felt like a cross between a gel cream with Vaseline. So it was like the perfect product to just seal in all of your skincare and prevent water loss. And that is what I need because my skin, if I don't put some type of heavy occlusive, like an Aquaphor, Vaseline, whatever, I wake up and my skin is like, <clears throat> it's like so dry and like ugh, so dehydrated. So I need something that locks it in. That was like my ideal texture for a product. So if you've tried the Pharmacy Niacinamide Mask and you know a product that feels similar, but isn't like just a bomb like Aquaphor or Vaseline, let me know because those balmy products feel so heavy, but the Pharmacy Niacinamide Mask didn't. So loved the texture, hated the amount of niacinamide. If they dropped it down to like a three to 5%, would have been a chef's kiss 10 out of 10. Another one from M Cosmetics. They also were super nice and sent me the Cosmic Pearl Eyeshadow in Wish, along with the other products in their holiday set. I have loved every formula from M Cosmetics that I've ever tried, except for the serum blush and except for this one. This, when you look at it, you're just like, oh man, the packaging is amazing. It's this insane texture that's like reminiscent of, you know, those bouncy cream powder hybrid blushes that I love. And you put it on and it's like, Molten lava, baby. Look at that beam of light, chrome. It's chrome. And so you put it on your eyes and then you're like, huh? If you use more than just like a boop boop, then you'll get all these like flakes of eyeshadow and then it becomes really heavy on your eyelids. And what happens is something very bizarre. It makes your lids look about 40 years older. I've never had that issue with any other product. My friend Emily, who's Glitter Goblin on Instagram, she first noticed it and she she told me that before I even got the product. She was like, heads up, this made me look like I was like 105 years old. She's not wrong. You put it on and all of a sudden there are like dry patches and like wrinkles that you've never seen before. It makes your lids look incredibly textured in a way that's not glittery, in a way that looks aged. Also found that within a few hours it creased and faded off of my eyes like crazy. And I really don't have that problem with eyeshadows. I really don't find that like Creasing or longevity is a big deal for me. I don't ever notice it. Um, but with this, I did. It was gone at the end of the day. God, M Cosmetics knocks it out of the park with everything else that they do. So they were due for a not perfect product. Next up is a product that I have swatched many times but not really talked about because I don't like it. <laughs> it's the Wander Beauty Double Date. I think it's called the Lip and Cheeks. They come in these like little pots similar to the eyeshadows, but just bigger. And it's a quite opaque, creamy cheek balm. And on the other side of it, you flip it over and it's a clear Vaseline-y balm that you can use on our lips, eyes, cheeks, whatever. I don't like any type of cream blush that's considered a balm. That is that kind of emollient, sticky formula. So Tower 28 blushes, the Rose Ink Cream Blush, so sticky. The Undone Beauty Cheek Palette, the Wonder Beauty Double Dates, and that's why, frankly, I haven't purchased anything from Salt New York. That kind of balm texture, I find, always just feels very heavy and sticky on my face. And I really prefer products that go on as creams, but set down. I don't want something where it feels like my hair is sticking to my face, where if I touch my face, I'm like, oh, my hands are greasy. I just prefer something that has a little bit more cosmetic elegance to it. I feel like people were just like so hard on cheek balms and kind of sheer balmy face products. And unfortunately that's just not for me. You guys, I found this in my drawer the other day and I am so fucking pissed 
that I didn't return this. This is a $50 product and I knew I hated it. This is the Dr. Laura Devgan Platinum Lip Plump Broad Spectrum SPF 30. It's $50 has a doe fit applicator. It is essentially a sunscreen that has a very strong plumping agent that burns the lips like an intense cinnamon and has such a strong sunscreen taste and scent that it makes me want to throw up. I can like feel it in my like esophagus. Well, my esophagus is up here. Oh, even now I can smell it. I'm like, Whoa. I'm gonna try it again. But you're gonna see my lips are gonna be like, and you cannot cannot get outside your lip lines. Don't do it. You will look like a crazy person. And there's like not a lot of product on the applicator, maybe because they don't want you to use a lot because it's like dangerous. <laughs> oh, it's so gross. Ugh. It has like the strongest chemical sunscreen taste. I can smell it, I can taste it. It's in my mouth, it's in my throat. I don't like it. It makes me feel like I'm having an allergic reaction. It's so intense. So we're gonna move on, but uh, you can watch this lip plumper do its magic as I keep talking and I'm going to eventually have to take it off. So if you're looking for an effective lip plumper, like this is it, and it has sunscreen, which is great, but ultimately um, that irritation that it's causing looks beautiful for a second, but leaves my lips so dry so, 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 so dry, combined with the fact that it has a disgustingly intense chemical sunscreen scent and taste, it's a pass. That being said, mm-hmm, she juicy. I'm not done with the lip plumpers there. I've tried three others that were all fails, which has led me to confirm lip plumpers are not for me. While I didn't purchase this product, I did try it in stores several times. It's the Fenty Gloss Balm Heat. Personally, the Fenty Gloss isn't my favorite. I'm just finding that these kind of lip plumpers that are irritating really aren't doing anything for me and that irritation leaves my lips feeling dry. So for me personally, it's a pass on the Fenty. I did find it a little bit irritating too. It had that like cinnamon burn, but hey, I'm sensitive and a lot of people aren't, so to each their own. Okay, I have to take this off. This is absolutely terrible. Next up is another new launch. This is the Lawless Forget the Filler overnight lip plumping mask. I just bought this like the second it launched on Sephora and it has a gorgeous texture. It is very, very similar to the Laneige lip sleeping mask in texture. It is thick and when it goes on, feels very nourishing. Has that amazing lawless strawberry scent. Wow, I have a headache from the Dr. Laura Devgan lip plumper. I'm like having a hard time focusing right now. Whew hurts my temples. Anyways, uh, the Lawless Plumper, it feels wonderfully nourishing, beautiful, and then you get that menthol kick. I don't understand why people put menthol in lip products. All it does is dry my lips out and irritate them. It doesn't add any plumping effect. There are no like benefits to menthol. I don't know why people think that menthol is plumping. Is it just because it irritates and that makes your lips look better? Yeah, I should have checked the ingredients list before I purchased this lip mask. I was just trusting Lawless to knock it out of the park with another lip formula. I am obsessed with their glosses. I am done with lip products that are plumping, burning, or have menthol in them. My issue is sometimes people call things plumping and it's not menthol. It more refers to products that like fill in the lip lines with hyaluronic acid or something like that. That's the kind of plumping product I like. When it's plumping in the sense that it is plumping up fine lines with great skincare ingredients. But these irritating, burning, plumping products, not for me. Ugh. Oh my God, my lips feel terrible. Ugh. I'm gonna break a couple hearts here. This is the Mario, Makeup by Mario. I was about to say Mario Badescu. Uh, Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum. Damn it, they did it to me again. I saw plumping and I was like, ooh, it's gonna have great skincare ingredients. Partially my fault. I did check this prior to purchasing it and I saw that menthol was an ingredient and I was like, eh, maybe I'll like it. Maybe it'll be good, it'll be fine. Um, it's not. First of all, it's another one of those packages that you can click up, but you can't click it back down. I don't mind that with the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss and here's why. The Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss is so thick and kind of stiff that when you rub it on your lips, it does, doesn't just like melt all over the packaging. At least for me personally, it does get messy. I won't, I won't lie to you. 
The packaging does feel cheap on the Charlotte Tilbury ones. However, to me, I don't find that it just like melts everywhere and then you have to keep twisting it up. That's what happens with the makeup by Mario. It also has a gross floral menthol scent. And if you are someone who's not sensitive to scents, you will be saying, Kate, what are you talking about? These have absolutely no scent or fragrance or taste whatsoever. But to my attuned nose, I can tell uh, there is some type of fragrance, whether it's just from the ingredients or it's an added fragrance. It's just like, a little perfumey and a little bit menthol-y. Also, there is noticeable glitter. So I'm gonna do my best to show you what I'm talking about. So that's the product. And you can see it is over the edge of the packaging. And when you apply it, it's already gone. That's all that came out because it like melted right over the packaging. So then you have to twist it up again and you're like, feeling the edge of the packaging and you're like, did I get any out? And then by that time, it's like all over the packaging. I'm just gonna kind of like rub this all over because it had so much excess. Beautiful looking, beautiful. But like, I need to keep twisting it up because it's melted over. It's melted over the edges and now I can't get enough product. So you can see it's melted all over the edge of the bullet. Oh, and it's just a, some type of floral perfume. I don't want that. I don't want that near my lips. I just want a fragranced lip product that is a subtle scent of something I would want to put near my mouth. Vanilla, cupcakes, brownies, mint even, fine, candy, fruit. I don't want flowers near my mouth. I don't, I don't want perfume near my mouth. It's very slippery, makes me feel like stuff's moving around, makes me feel like it's getting in my teeth. So I constantly have to do that. And it has tiny particles of, you're not gonna be able to see that, who the fuck am I talking about? Um, it has tiny particles of glitter. When I rub them together, I can feel them on my lips. I don't tend to do this very often, but since I just bought this, I might return it back to Sephora because I rarely do that. And you know what, like I want my money back. Oh, and by the way, this was the shade Bronze Glow. Honestly, I have a headache. I just had to chug a bunch of water because all of these ugh, awful fragrances. Okay, I powdered my face, touched up my blush, and I'm ready to go. I am like halfway through this list. Oh God, the next one is this company, Nero Beauty. I reviewed them in one video on YouTube, which was like a new lip products video. They make an affordable lip mask that comes with a doe foot wand. When the awful Travis Scott concert and Astro World concert happened, they the founder posted these back-to-back -back stories about the whole event being a purposeful setup, a planned satanic ritual with the purpose of killing people. She went all on this like tangent about how she was like in a satanic cult. Too much for a beauty brand for me. I don't want my beauty brands to be making statements like that. You do it on your own time, on your fa on your personal page. You know, my face is on their social media. I just don't want to be involved with that kind of thing. I'm not down with conspiracy theories. That is a brand I am no longer supporting. Next up, we have a general category with a few specific products, which is any type of very liquidy skin tint product. The Tarte Hydroflex is one I reviewed on my channel and I did not like. Fenty Blurring Skin Tint I reviewed on my channel, one of the worst products I've ever tried for my skin personally. I just have been realizing that the thinner and more liquidy a product, a foundation or a skin tint, the worse it seems to look on my skin, the more it emphasizes dry patches and texture. So any type of like really thin liquidy skin tint is just, not for my skin. You guys, the Dr. Dora, I can't even think straight. The Dr. Laura Devgan Lip Plumper, I still have the scent it, ugh, and like the fragrance in my mouth. I'm like actually having a hard time focusing. It's so intense. Next up, okay, the In Beauty, it's like Power Greens Jelly Oil Serum. They sent that to me in PR. Oh, and they sent me the sweatshirt. Isn't it cute? It says, give me more and in beauty. So cute. And it also makes me feel like Britney Spears. Um, so love that. Love everything else that they've literally ever sent me. 
Um, but I tried the jelly oil serum. It's a blend of a bunch of different oils with a bunch of different um, greens. And I tried it and it smelled like greens. It smells like spinach and vegetables, which for me, no, I don't wanna smell like that. And also I find that my skin does not do very well with a lot of oils. I don't use a facial oil. I don't like the feeling on my face. I don't, I've just never noticed that they do anything good for me. And I have noticed that a lot of times, sometimes I'll break out with oils, even though I, I use a lot of oils that are in products, but I don't use like an oil on my face. And it had a really cool consistency. It was like this bright green, like jelly kind of oil. And it was really cool. But the next morning I woke up and I had breakouts all over my face. I had put it all over my body just to see if it would make my body feel nice. Woke up with breakouts all over my chest. So I passed that on. Next we have a fail that's gonna be going in my best and worst liquid lip balms video. This is the L'Oreal Balm in Gloss in Angelic Daydream. Beautiful, a beautiful formula. An interesting applicator. No, no, no. If you hold it this way, it kind of looks like boobs. So I'm gonna apply it so you can see the texture. Ugh. Stunning, stunning formula. You know what I'm gonna say. You know exactly what I'm about to say about it. L'Oreal, get with the program. Why are we putting super floral perfume in our lip products? Why are we doing it? Nobody wants it. Mm -mm. This formula is beautiful. Creamy, plushes comfort, the balminess. Oh, so comfortable and so heavily fragranced with that classic floral L'Oreal perfume. Uh-uh, my headache is getting worse and worse. Mm. I'm not even gonna put this one on because I'm, I'm gonna spare myself. Also a terrible fragrance, the Huda Beauty um, it's like the Silk Balm in Spice. This is the glitter one. <gasps> I'll apply it. It smells like gym socks, burning rubber, and chemical honey. It's pretty though. Feels very nice. Tastes and smells like rubber for the same reason. <laughs> Also gonna be in my liquid lip balm video, the Rare Beauty uh, Gloss Balm. I forget what it's called, um, but this is in Nearly Neutral. Love the formula. Love this color. Nearly Neutral is beautiful. It is the same color as Fit Glow's Lip Serum in full, I think. Look at that. Mm. Stunning. Stunning. It is a perfect formula. After a couple minutes, I get this really soapy taste in my mouth and I just really don't like it. I'm actually for the first time not experiencing it right now, which is really interesting because all of the other ones were so intense and so strong with the scents and the way it left a taste in my mouth that this is my first time actually not experiencing that with this product because I'm like, I'm like, numb at this point. My receptors are wasted on all of the other fragrances, but normally it leaves quite a soapy taste in my mouth. And I know, I think Mariah Leonard talked about that as well. Um, a couple other people, was it Mariah Leonard? I don't know, but a couple other people had mentioned this like weird rare beauty taste. And that's a shame. Um, it's very subtle though. Like my friend Matilda on video loves this product and doesn't notice any type of fragrance or scent with it. So. I just always wanna film content for my sensitive friends out there, for those of you who are sensitive to fragrances and tastes. I find that every YouTuber I watch never mentions the scent of lip products or products in general. I am in every person's YouTube comment saying, what does the blah, blah, blah smell like to you? And no one ever mentions it. And it's really frustrating because I've wasted so much money on these terribly fragranced products. Well, I don't feel good putting like a wonderful formula in my fails video when I love this so much, but because it leaves a soapy taste in my mouth, I just feel like it's better to give my sensitive friends a little heads up about that. Oh, Glossier Monochromes. I did a whole review of this. Um, I think the shades are beautiful. I like the idea of this product, three different textures in the same color family. Love that, love that. 
that's exactly how I do makeup. Like one matte brown in the crease with like a shimmery matte brown on the lid. 100%, 10 out of 10. But the formulas are extremely inconsistent among the colors, so you just don't know what you're getting. For example, Teak is really nice, buttery, rich in pigment, easy to blend. Almond, which is my favorite color, the matte barely shows up. It's dry, it's patchy. There's basically no difference between the metallic and the satin. So also hate the fact that there's three shades and a four shadow pan in this packaging. So bulky, no more, I'm done. This was enough. I, I need to go have a snack, take some Advil, maybe take a bath, cry in the fetal position. I'm not sure, but I feel accosted by all of these fragrances. My lips are like super red up here. Did any of you have the same experience as I did? Or am I just talking shit on all your favorite products? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.